the real end shot that we ended up going with, I, the second that I read that, I was like, oh, that's the end. Like that's, you know, I know we could keep going and I know we could, we could make something out of this, but my gosh, is that an ending? Hey witches, and welcome to ET Live's farewell celebration for the chilling adventures of Sabrina. I'm Leanne Aguilera, joined right now with the bewitching Kiernan Shipka. Hey Kiernan. Hi Leanne, how's it going? Everything's good, I'm so excited to have you on. Fantastic, I'm excited to be here. I'm here today with the cast and we are so ready to dish out some very exciting little tidbits about part four of Chaos. Awesome, let's get started. Let's do it. You're enjoying this. Be back in action? Well, Kiernan, first off, how are you feeling? I feel like we're at the beginning of the end. I am feeling good. I'm feeling bittersweet. I think that, you know, the, uh, the string of events that happened with Chaos was interesting because we wrapped in early March, late February, early March, and within three weeks of wrapping, the entire world seemed to shut down, seemingly overnight. And I think we, I had just been filming for 10 months. I had poured my heart and soul into the show and to just be in my house, sitting with all my feelings, reflecting on basically the past two and a half years was absolutely wild. Yeah. <laughs> it was a lot, it was a lot to process, but I'm happy that I had time to process wrapping, process the show ending officially. And, and now to be at a point where I'm just so excited to share it with people, it feels like kind of perfect. It feels like great closure. I'm yeah. really excited to actually share it with the world. I've been holding, it's such a good season. I've just been holding on to all these spoilers for such a long time. I just want, I just want to talk about it. Like, I'm kind of, I was kind of getting to the point where I was like, okay guys, can we just put it out so I can like actually, you know, I, I, it's hard to not talk about it because there's so many exciting things that happen. And I have a hard time distinguishing when, when they happen because that's all such a blur. Um, but no, needless to say, I am just, Oh, above all else, I am just thrilled for people to finally be seeing it because Definitely. fans deserve it. And the fans have been so passionate. They love this show so much. So what do you want to tease to them about part four? So much happens. Oh my gosh. I think fans are going to get everything they want and more. I think with two Sabrinas, <laughs> uh, they are going to get double the fun. And you know, because there's two Sabrinas, there's 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 multiple people in her life, and there's multiple interactions that I think people are going to find very satisfying that uh, we couldn't do with just one. I could go to hell and visit Spring Morningstar. Darkness is going to consume Green Tail and the entire world if we don't stop it. A threat to one of us is a threat to us both. This one kind of goes all the way, really. You know, this um, it, it runs the gamut of experience. Um, Birth, marriage, death, everything, it's all in there. And, and Sabrina, we, we, I think that's already been in the trailer, she turned 17. And yeah, I remember having to do a little photo shoot for her birthdays. I think we're allowed to tell that because it's very brief. And it got to her 16th birthday and we were pretending that, you know, that Sabrina was 16 singing happy birthday. And I was like, oh, enjoy your last year of niceness because it's about to get really sh <laughs> <laughs> Sabrina's being tricksy. Your Aunt Hilda worked very hard baking that cake. Yeah, it's your favorite one. Anzi, I'm not sure what happened of all the stuff that you loved in the first couple of seasons, um, there's just a lot more. It was ambitious, a very, but let's just say it was, it was in terms of casting, it was hugely ambitious. And I still can't believe that they managed to pull off. A lot of new discoveries for, for a lot of characters um, and uh, uh, some new magic to be found. A lot of very juicy and delicious alliances that people may not see coming. Also, are you guys able to tease the musical moment? Because that was so cool. 
the, one of many very exciting musical moments. My favorite one ever is coming up in this part, and I'm I'm so excited about it. I don't think we can say anything because it's like the one thing that Netflix still hasn't um, put out. So it, I'm I'm really 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 excited to like finally talk about it because I've been telling all my music friends like, oh, we get to do something really cool, but I can't tell you what it is. <laughs> But I'm it's, so excited. And it is so I, epic. Robin gets to join the Pride Club. The band. In like the most cool way ever. Like Jonathan, like taking on that part. Like what was that like for you? That was fun. I was really like, it was pretty nerve wracking to be honest with you. Cause I'd never really like done anything like that. Done recording in a studio and done prelay and, and come into that scenario feeling like kind of I don't know. I there, I was given so much to like prepare and like feel confident about that, and then when we were actually doing it. I was like, oh my god, this is so much fun! <laughs> like I could do this all day because we we were also doing like a lot of the scene work around that moment, and like we didn't really get to actually do the musical segment till the end. And yeah, I just didn't want it to end. I knew that it was gonna be. Yeah, I knew it was gonna be this like very sweet moment, and I was gonna look back on it fondly, and I still do. I I, I wish that I. Yeah, I wish I could do it again. What can you tease for the fans out there about our two hell-raising boys? Do we get to see any team-ups this season? We definitely get into it this season. Me and me and Cal, um, I was gonna say Calbrina. <laughs> which, is a, which is a hint for the fans, God knows. Uh, there, there's gonna be some Calbrina this season. But me and Sam spent a lot of time on set together this season, and Michelle too, we're always together. Yeah, there's some beautiful camaraderie between the whole lot. There's some episodes where the whole cast are together and then there's uh, something that kind of divides us all. And uh, it is a little bit hell versus earth once again. The fans are going to see what they've been like dying to see, I think. We really wanted to like just get everything in that we could into part four. So like there's more singing stuff. There's a lot of flirting and romance and scary moments and epic moments and, uh, um, you know, the eldritch terrors, which are fun as hell to explore in each episode. So I think that, you know, they're just going to get what they've been waiting for. And it's finally here. You promised me boys. I wanted you to meet my friends first. All the shippers will be happy at some point in this season. This is so true. I think I can say that, I think I can say that every single shipper will have their moment. We yes. paid homage to all of the ships. I have never seen a show that has fans so passionately shipping so many different pairs. Was that surprising to you when we introduced Nick to see just how much things shifted in the fandom? Definitely. I think the, it's, it's so kind of even funny for me to think about the fact that the first, uh, first part had really like virtually zero Nabrina content. Like I can't imagine the fandom without Nabrina being a pillar. I had come onto the show with like four episodes guaranteed with like an option of four more after that. And I had no, I had no way of knowing that it was going to be like this deep love affair with, with the show. She was my first on-screen kiss ever. I don't think I ever even kissed someone on stage either. I'd always played like younger characters. So she was like my first acting romance partner. Um, and yeah, I do, I do remember the last, the last kiss. I was just like, this is gonna be the last time that Sabrina or Nick or Gavin or Kieran or whatever, this is, this is gonna be the last time that we kiss. And I was like, man, what a weird job I have and how funny and here we are now, you know? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I mean the ships, the ships make the show. The ships are great. And Sabrina's got a little, uh, little complex, complex love life and that's fine. She's 16. Yeah. Going on 17. Going on 17. That was one hell of a year. Oof, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I think it, I think it rivals 2020. It really does. I think like whatever, whatever, uh, whatever date she's in, they're in, I think it rivals 2020. It, I honestly feel like her, from her 16th to her 17th birthday, it must have been over 2020 because the like fact it. that all that happened over a year is just. You know what? It makes sense now because people are always like, oh, what year is this in? It's 
I think it it was. I think it answers it. I think we. I think we have an answer. I think we finally figured it out. We can <laughs> confirm. Particularly in this season, this season's very 2020. And cut. Oh, that was wonderful, dear. You're gonna fit right in here. Oh, Sabrina, this is gonna be a laugh riot. Want to see me do a spit take? Sorry, who are you? Well, we're your aunties, of course. I am so excited that the original aunties from Sabrina the Teenage Witch were able to join you guys in part four for a special kind of crossover anti-mishmash celebration. Um, what was it like for you ladies to welcome them onto your turf and onto your set? We were so excited. <laughs> when they first came up with the idea, we thought, oh wow, it sounds like an amazing idea, but will, would we ever be able to crossover with you know another show the intellectual property and then would they be willing to do it would they be kind enough to come onto our set and work with us so yeah. it seemed like such a cool idea but you know in the back of my mind i thought how are they ever going to make that happen yeah. uh and then they did which was just fantastic and it's a really really clever funny script yeah it is i i, I posted a picture on uh instagram the other day of the four of us and Miranda and Beth, who the two Zeldas are sitting in the back, doing what Zeldas would think is right, which is I've been told to look at the camera lens. So they are. Whereas the two Hildas in the front are like, <laughs> <laughs> just chatting away, <laughs> and forgetting that you know where we are and what we're meant to be doing. And I, I love that picture. Obviously, you didn't necessarily know that the part four finale was the series finale. Were you able to snag anything from set? No, I have no material goods. I have zero, zero set memorabilia. I have, I have certain gifts that were given to me over time from, you know, that are Sabrina themed from cast and crew and whatnot, but I have nothing that's like, I stole this from the set, or I took this from the set. I asked just for like, as a memory of Zelda, could I get the cigarette holder? I'm not a smoker, but it's just like, it's it's nice to have something small to remember yeah. a character yeah. by, rather than like, oh, I'll take a whole, you know, hulking, you know, portrait from the wall or something. Where am I gonna put that? But like something tiny. So I did ask for that, and I'm wondering if one day that might arrive. Um, I asked for the teacups. What did I steal? Um, oh, well, I could show you around this room, but I'm not gonna. Um, there's just like small things, uh, like my shoes and uh, some of my, some of my, um, a lot of my underwear, because um, it was cute. Um, yeah, basically shoes and underwear. I did, however, take several pairs of underwear. So wardrobe department, I'm so so sorry, um, but they're the most comfortable. They're so cozy and soft, so I, I am, I think I'm wearing a pair right now, actually. Got those Mambo Marie mer rings. Those are the hey, rings. Hey, what? You got to take the rings. That's lit. Yo, and look, don't bring a thief to set, because yes, uh, I got Mambo all through this apartment. Some costumes might have disappeared. <laughs> But I, I, I begged our costume designer, Angus, to let me keep a few things. And he basically just told me that he um, would look the other way. Jonathan, please tell me you got to keep your goblin ears. I wish. You should have just grown them I love those ears. That was like, <laughs> ah, man. I, it, it felt like it was uh, like a glove, you know what I mean? Like, I just felt like they were always supposed to be there. And oddly enough, when I put them on, I was like able to have more periphery in my hearing. Like I could hear, it was weird. Like I, people would kind of come up behind me and I'd have this kind of like on edge moment of being like, is this person really close to me? Um, but if you think about it, you know, if you cup your ears, like it's it's the same thing. But um, I didn't get to keep anything really cool. I was, I was of the mind that we were gonna keep going. Oh, I did try to steal a picture of, of, uh, of Miranda. I tried to steal a picture of her in in uh, in character. It was a beautiful picture, and it had a gorgeous gilt edge frame. And I got it from the set to my trailer. And because I'm such a good girl, and I'm nothing like Madam Satan, I started sweating. And I was like, "Because you hear that people do that. You hear that actors just take it." Well, not if you're a working class Glaswegian that's been brought up properly. So I was sweating like mad, and I was panicking. And I put it back. You wouldn't give it back? I put it back. 
You didn't even at least ask if you could keep it? No. <laughs> I just put it back. I stole it for like a hot second and then I put it back. This is like the most anti Madam Satan thing you've yeah. ever done. I am nothing like Madam Satan. I am the goofy f. I'm gonna try to see if they can go into storage and at least send something because it's kind of a bum that I didn't. I'm Should've. shocked that you don't have at least your headbands. I, I don't know if I want to see the headbands again. I, I don't, I, <laughs> I, think, I think I'm good. Do you have an onset moment that you think about that just brings a smile to your face? Uh, one moment in particular that you're always going to cherish? Oh my goodness, I have so many. I would say that all those giant group scenes where we're all together and it's just a day of shooting one massive scene in the church of night or in the woods or something like that. All those memories I just hold so close to my heart. But one that was particularly funny was when Luke Cook made us all do that dancing video that we put out in the Baxter High hallway. And I remember that night so vividly because it was the last night of shooting before we went on a little hiatus. And he was like, guys, like, this is going to be amazing. We're going to do this. And we're all just like, oh, I don't know. And then the second that we started dancing, like, the, everything. You forget about everything. Mm -hmm. um, so just just being with everyone, our little jam sessions, all of our hangouts, all of our pranks. I just, that's not a concise answer, but I miss it all. There was a night that Ross and I, I'm pretty sure this was like, like, Union might not enjoy this and I might get a little slap on the back of the hand for this later, but that's okay. Um, but Ross and I like slept on set, like not on set, but like at the studio where we were filming. I think what Gavin probably forgot to mention is that they actually had a sleepover in my trailer. Um, basically to set the scene, we were filming a little bit further away from town than usual, probably like an hour and a half out. And our call the next day was quite early and Gavin was like, I think I'm just gonna sleep here. Like, and I was like, well, I'm, I'm going home. So if you want to take my trailer, go for it. We were like sneaking in there while the cleaning crew like came through and did all that. And Ross and I just like waited for everyone to peace out. It was like 1 a.m. And then we just like walked around and it was so eerie that we were like, we were, we've always been at like the studio or wherever we were shooting when loads of people are just buzzing about all over the place, you know? And for the first time I saw a, like our studio where all the magic was kind of happening completely barren and empty. And it was just Ross and I like, um, you know, th there was like a train nearby and we like watched it go by and we like had deep talks and we're just like thinking about the whole experience and what a wild like ride it had been and it was kind of near the end that that, that had happened um, where we just like stayed overnight and then we woke up and just got right to work and we were bright eyed and bushy tailed and wait that um, is amazing you had like a bromantic sleepover on the set of Sabrina did yeah they had a moment they had their nice little romantic sleepover and I showed up the next day at uh, 8 a.m. and. <laughs> said rise and shine. <laughs> no, I felt like- I Get like out of my trailer. Mom, I felt like it was a mom waking her kids up like, all right guys, we gotta go. It's school time. Like, uh, let's, let's get out so Keeks can uh, drink her coffee and be bearable to talk to. But <laughs> yeah, I'm glad they had a nice time. The Elders Terrace are ancient entities. They are world destroying. And there are more terrors yet to come. Culminating with the arrival of the Void. When you read the part four finale script, what was your immediate reaction? Well, there were different versions of the script depending on whether or not it was a finale or not. But the real end shot that we ended up going with, I, the second that I read that, I was like, oh, that's the end. Like that's, you know, I know we could keep going and I know we could, we could make something out of this, but my gosh, is that an ending? I haven't read it and I haven't seen it. <gasps> So I'm gonna I'm gonna find out with the fans. My reaction. Oh my god, the fans are gonna be so mad. <laughs> that in like the best of ways, like it's like that finale is just Oh god, I don't know how to like tease it without spoiling it. 
oh yes well i screamed <laughs> i did scream and then i thought no nah, there's no way they're going to be able to cool that off you know what how kind of beautiful i felt like what a great send-off and, and an interesting um you know um shakespearean kind of thing to do i think in some perfect way it ended up being a really good and and really powerful ending um because it does leave you wanting more but with like a, an acceptance i think that'll come with the finale of that we've been dealing with um, all of these big heady sort of um, enemies and i think all of that comes to a really honest place so i think that's kind of the perfect way to end it but i still think i think some people are going to be a little mad i think we were a little mad we were like well, we want to do more and i think the fans are going to want more i think and i was the only one with a sneaking suspicion that we may be saying goodbye to each other on that last day i was well, the one crying and hugging people you were really good because miranda said to me about two weeks before she had a theory of why she didn't think we would be coming back and it hadn't occurred to me. And we were outside about two in the morning outside the Spellman house. And I remember being in a bit of a daze doing the, the next few takes. And I was like, is this the last time we're gonna see the Spellman house? And it hadn't occurred to me. And I'm really glad that she said it because I was able, everything we did for the next three weeks, I was able to go, this might be the last time. And so that was, um, you know, especially because we made lots of good friends in Vancouver and we had such yeah. a great crew. Um, it was kind of weird to think that that little bubble of life wouldn't exist like that anymore. Um, so I'm, I'm glad of Miranda for that. She's always, you're always the one Miranda that's good at like, you'll read a script and go, I think it's because that's going to happen. And I'm like, Wah. and I think that, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like it with all these things. How do you think the fans are going to react to it? I think they're going to be overwhelmed with emotions because I was, um, and I would I would think that they would think similarly. Um, I think everyone will be happy with it, but also a little bit surprised. I was surprised. Yeah, I it's not a predictable one. It's, it's not a predictable ending. It's it's not. I didn't really see that coming in any kind of way, shape, or form. I think it does wrap things up, but it certainly does not leave you fully satisfied. Mm -hmm. In a good way. My name is Sabrina Spellman. And I will not sign it away. Here goes nothing. Well, what do you hope that Chilling Adventures of Sabrina's kind of lasting legacy is going to be with the fans? When they think about this show, what do you hope comes to mind? I hope that people found joy in the show and I hope that people found an escape in this show. And I, I, I hope that this show inspired people to come into their own power and, and be the most unapologetic version of themselves. I really hope that it inspires people to just live fearlessly and boldly and kindly at the end of the day. Well, that's our show. Thank you all so much for tuning in to ET Live's farewell celebration for the chilling adventures of Sabrina. Kiernan, how can fans watch Sabrina's final chapter? Chilling Adventures of Sabrina airs December 31st only on Netflix and you can stream it then and forever. Forever. And be sure to check back to ET Online immediately after you've binged part four for exclusive spoiler interviews with Kiernan and the rest of the cast. Bye, witches. Bye.